Finding Common Battlegrounds is an attempt by two brothers, one conservative, the other progressive, to have civil conversations about politics with a little help from their friends. All right, everyone, welcome to another episode of Finding Common Battlegrounds. This is our podcast where we talk about uh, active current events and uh, political ideology. Um, but we do it a little differently where we try to find out what we agree on versus just speaking over each other and using ad hominems. Although we do occasionally attack each other personally. Um, so today is gray shirt day. And uh, so I <laughs> And we're going to be talking about uh, oil in the U.S. Uh, so we're going to be talking about should we should the U.S. be um, drilling for more oil uh, is basically the subject. So, but first, our sponsor Lux Bidets. If you've never tried a bidet, you don't know what you're missing. We're all big fans of bidets. They say uh, just like this is a civilized podcast, it's a civilized way to go to the bathroom. Now that uh, uh, wiping your uh, but with paper and just smearing everything around, it's just not, not, not civilized. Um, but let's go ahead and so jump into it. So we are going to try uh, both uh, Ryan and Josh, who are debaters. Ryan will be representing the left and, and Josh will be representing the right. Uh, have, they've each prepared three questions and they're going to try to get the other to agree with them as much as possible. They get brownie points for every time they can get them to agree. And they're usually pretty good at it. Um, and, uh, but yeah, we'll dive in and, uh, talk about it. So, uh, a couple of things, um, I will bring up. Yeah. So, uh, the U S uh, actually doesn't, the U S itself, the U S government doesn't drill for oil, but it does regulate whether private publicly traded companies can drill for oil on land within the United States. Um, so basically that's kind of what we're debating is should the U.S. allow for more drilling for, pri for, for oil by private uh, for-profit companies, right? That's how, that's how the U.S. controls that, uh, can control it. And, and um, just to give some context, I did some articles and I'm still... Uh-oh. Tom, Sorry. a ghost? <laughs> it's like, you were, you were doing great. Yeah. Well, I was right there no. with you, and you Sorry. came to a train screeching halt there. I bet you guys were interrupting me. I'm like, oh, nope. What the heck, Ryan? Um, <laughs> sorry, I had some videos to play there. Uh, okay, yeah. So what I was looking at was, um, yeah. So B Biden, uh, one of his campaign promises was to halt uh, the uh, fossil fuels, right? To to try to, um, uh, I don't know if he said specifically. Um, pause. He was trying to pause fossil fuels and stop them, and, and you know it's basically a, a, a left talking point. Um, he did. It depended he did on have, which state he was in. In one state, he said, "I'm going to destroy the oil industry," and then when he was in Pennsylvania, he was like, "Oh, I'm down for fracking or whatever." So it depended <laughs> oh, on which state he was in for his promises. But yes, continue. Well, he did pause. Uh, he did have a pause on it for for, uh, and and anyone can jump in here because I've just kind of cobbled together some facts that he did posit for a, a, a period of time at the beginning of this year he did they did start issuing leases um, right. quite quite a few um but then there was it looked like there was a moratorium put on it in like late february um and i'm not sure i'm still trying to figure out like if those moratoriums were lifted i'm not sure if they have been and and i know i know he is considering they, they're kind of considering doing more drilling, but I don't think a, a formal decision has been made yet. Ryan, you yeah. want to? Uh, I was just going to say, it's gotten tangled up in some legal wrangling as well, right? So there's some lawsuits going back and forth. But yes, he put a moratorium on leases for oil companies right out of the gate. So he didn't want to expand the, the drilling and then they've backtracked on that. And it's gotten complicated. And I think, I mean, that's why I, I thought this would be a really interesting topic is it is complicated, right? That, like we're in a really tricky situation with the situation with Russia and Ukraine, and that has driven the price of oil up dramatically. So then it raises a very valid question. We have potentially more resources. Do we drill? Yeah. And, and we have released some strategic oil reserves uh, to try and ease some of that, um, some of that, you know, the, the price that, you know, some of the supply uh, burden, but... <laughs> but uh, I, knew, I knew I knew that was going to come up at some point. Um, 
But uh, yeah, so that's kind of the context of where we're at. Um, I'm just going to jump in into one of these questions that usually kicks off our, our uh, conversation. So um, I always got to decide which one should go first. Okay. So, all right, let's start. Yeah. Ryan, so this is Josh's question. Ryan, would you agree we actually are drilling for more oil? This is kind of interesting. All right. Um, before I get into this, play that the video I linked. It's, it's really oh. quick. And I'm going to okay. try not to scream. All right. Here we go. For U.S. oil companies that are recording their largest profits in years, they have a choice. One, they can put those profits to productive use by producing more oils, restarting idle wells, or producing on the sites they already are leasing. Giving the American people a break by passing some of the savings on to their customers and lowering the price of the pump. Or they can, as some of them are doing, exploit the situation, sit back, ship those profits to the investors, and while American families struggle to make ends meet. All right, so let me get right. this straight. Yeah. Yeah. The right. oil company. Got it. <laughs> I hate that man so much. I came to a realization today. It's if if uh, this is going our our podcast. My whole goal in the next two years is to get Ryan to admit that Trump was a better president than Biden. That's my whole <laughs> thing for the rest of our podcast. Because I hate this uh, man so much. He's so stupid. I okay, think so, it would be easier to get me to convince me to cut off my arm, Josh. <laughs> so my goal. <laughs> If you have a shred of intellectual honesty, you're going to admit this at some point. Okay, oh so my he's, gosh. he's blaming all the oil companies for for high oil prices, right? And saying they're not they're not uh, drilling enough, they're not producing enough, as if there's just a magical switch that they can just flip and produce more oil. Okay, so I, and I'll, I'll touch again on this in my second point, but let me just read this from a Forbes article I found today. It was good. One of the latest lines of attack in the finger pointing over rising gas gasoline prices goes like this. U.S. oil companies are sitting on a huge number of permits content to reap enormous profits while they refuse to drill for oil. This is mostly false, but with a kernel of truth that is never taken in context. So let's discuss what's really happening. The truth is that the number of rigs drilling for oil in the U.S. is steadily climbing. The year-over-year -year increase in the Baker Hughes North American rig count is now about 60%. In fact, historically, it has rarely climbed at a faster pace than this. Clearly, the notion that oil companies are just sitting on their hands, content to withhold production and squeeze American consumers is false. Okay, so we're actually, we are building more rigs. This is mm -hmm. uh, um, not even in dispute. Well, so, I mean, in the very, if you look at the very fundamentals of economics, supply and demand, right? When prices are high, then you, that's the incentive to get more people drilling, right? Or to any product, right? People are to sell more. You want, to you want to increase supply. Yes. Right. So no, if you can increase well, supply, you'll make more money well, because prices no. are high. And well, yeah, but that, right now. that'll bring right. that'll bring prices down. I'm saying when prices are high, that usually meaning demand is prices are high because demand is high, and because right. supply is not high enough, and therefore that's the incentive to get people into the market, right? So, like right. high prices is the best way to get more people to be drilling, right? Yes. Yeah, I'm just saying yeah. this In all makes sense, market. right? Everyone should be because prices are going up, and so uh, yeah. But there's still a deficit, right? And we're not producing as sure. much as we could be. Um, and gas prices are going up and up. This is an issue. But well, I mean, they leveled off. They've been going down, just to be clear, right? So they barely. went up a lot, but they've gone down like 15 cents or something from their yeah. peak. Yeah. Not that I would know. I drive an electric car, but they I hear it in the news. I so. knew that was coming out. <laughs> Thanks, Pete Buttigieg. Um, uh, yes, they have gone down, but they're historically quite high. Yes, they, they have right. a big, big and, guy. And what I'm addressing is that, that Biden, he keeps blaming everybody else, right? Keeps saying it's the gas, uh, the, the oil companies, they're price gouging. And it's the, Russia. The That's Putin, what really happened. Putin tax hike or something like okay, that. Putin but, price hike. But uh, gas prices were going up before the war in Ukraine. Okay. This was climbing. This has been climbing since uh, Biden came into office, essentially. Um, and I... It's going to be really hard for me not to just go all in on Biden, right? But, but well, the very first day he he killed the Keystone Pipeline, right? Yeah, and and it wasn't 
he said it's for environmental reasons, but it's all bull crap because now they have to ship all that on trucks, which is way more, has a bigger environmental impact than if there's a pipeline. Okay. This is, it's all been debunked. It's all political. So the government is interjecting itself into uh, this industry. That's irrefutable. So I, I wanted to establish that, see if we could agree. And then I'm going to talk more about this in my second point on uh, on the market, the oil markets and stuff like that. But Ryan, would you agree we, we actually are drilling for more oil? Because the question tonight was kind of weird. Should we drill for more oil? I think we yeah, are. I, yeah, I, I, I mean, I like agreeing on facts. So... My understanding is that oil production in the U.S., oil and natural gas, so fossil fuel production in the U.S., has been going up over the last X number of years. Um, not like crazy, crazy fast, but it's going up. It's and going I'll, up. And I'll yeah. address that. Um, so, I mean, that's just a and, fact, right? Like we're, we're extracting more resources, and that's because of more advanced technologies, effectively, right? Well, so, among other reasons. So yeah. we'll okay. We'll we'll circle back around to this in my second point. We got agreement there. Ding ding. Wait. Good job. Okay, we're off to a great start. Uh, okay, Josh, can you can we agree that the ultimate goal of the U.S. administration should be to transition our economy to clean energy sources to limit a pollution and cl- and b climate change? Uh, and yeah, if yeah. You want, I'll I'll cover that. Yeah. You can, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Do you think so, that's the, is that right? Do you agree? <clears throat> so ahead, I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that I don't like polluted rivers that can light on fire because they're so polluted or devoid of life because they're so toxic and there's no oxygen in the water. I don't like smog or air pollution. I don't like oil spills. I don't like finding trash in nature in the ocean or on the side of the road. I enjoy spending time away from human development and very much appreciate the beauty of nature. And I think that's true for both of you. Right. Um, so can we just agree that the ultimate goal for any administration, right, not just the current administration, but for any U.S. administration, should be to transition our economy to clean energy sources to limit A, pollution, and B, and we can take these separately if you want, climate change. Can we just agree on that? No, actually, because it's not feasible right now. Well, I didn't say right now. I, this, I put no timeline on this, Josh. There was okay. no timeline. If, if it becomes that was intentional. feasible... Because but that was intentional. You know, look, I didn't put at, a timeline uh, on it. Look at California, where they, they put all these mandates on, on energy, and now they have rolling blackouts because they don't have enough energy during the summer, right? Because it has to be clean energy. You, we can't do crap like that. We can't it's a little do, bit more complicated than that, but but that's fine. I mean, can you just agree with like happening. the? Can you agree with the sentiments, right? Yeah, that, because this is all I'm going for is like we actually all agree that we yes. don't like pollution. And that um, we want to move to clean energy. So growing up, the, there was, you know, I loved cartoons growing up, G.I. Joe and Animaniacs. There was Captain Planet, and I hated that freaking cartoon. It was so stupid because the what, what did the bad guys do in that show? They were just like these weird dudes that wanted to burn down the rainforest, and they wanted to put like toxic sludge in rivers just, just for it. fun. <laughs> like, what? Even as a child, I was like, who wants to live on a planet that they just put toxic sludge in a river? Okay, it, and this is exactly so my stupid. point. This yeah. is what I wanted to do is to make it clear, like, we actually agree on this. Like, Absolutely. conservatives Everybody and does. progressives all agree that we don't want pollution in the air nope. right now. And, I get like right, some companies right, pollute right. and they try You're and get away with it. If but... we could wave a magic wand and, yes. and every, we, we just, everyone, we're now on a renewable energy. We would do it. I think so. I think, I think everybody sure, would everybody do this, was. right? And I, this I think that's be, true. When, when politicians are, are addressing climate change, this should be the starting point. Yes. Okay? Everybody agrees and for some reason, we don't start here. For some reason, we we just start, you know, with the and with fighting. antagonistic yes. fighting. And this should be the starting point. We all want clean energy, and the left loves to use this as a as a straw man. Well, you guys just want to pollute the planet. Who wants to go outside and breathe in smog? Right? See? It's just it's so silly. I ag- I yeah. agree, and but that's I, why that's I wanted this saying, to be the starting point. Yes, yes, that's the starting point. Is like this is where I think we all want to go. The question is like, how do we get there? How long is it going to take? That and we can, you know, we can fight over those issues. We agree on this. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Agre- agreement. Woohoo! We're one. I mean, uh, I, I did, yeah, I did burn down that rainforest last year just because I wanted to. But apart from that, I agree. <laughs> Josh dumps uh, his leftover oil on the, the street just because. 
Okay. Ryan, would you agree that the oil companies are not making huge investments into drilling right now because oil is a very volatile market? Yeah, this is interesting because yeah, um, I've been trying to figure this. this out. I looked into this a bit. The, they are making investments in, in more drilling, okay? Because of, obviously they have to if they want to stay in business. But uh, where, where Biden was saying in that video, they're, they have two choices. They can either just take all the money and give it to their investors or they can reinvest it in oil. Well, they are reinvesting in oil, but they're not, they're not doing huge reinvestments. Okay. That's the one half truth he told in that video. They're, they're not taking the profits right now for very high oil and, and making mass investments in new oil. Um, so let me read this from a different Forbes article. It is, no, oh, this one might, might've been from the same one. It is certainly a fair question to ask why oil companies aren't increasing drilling at a faster pace. There are several reasons for that. One is that the industry is suffering from manpower and material shortages. For example, when oil demand fell in 2020, many people permanently left the oil industry frustrated by years of up and down cycles. The oil industry continues to suffer from a manpower shortage that is affecting many industries. This manpower shortage also impacts oil filled service Services and supplies, sand used for hydro. Uh, we won't go to that. A number of oil companies went bankrupt during the 2020 plunge. Those companies won't be drilling for oil. Finally, and here's the bit that con contains a nugget of truth: many oil companies have said they are going to be more financially disciplined than they have been through previous boom and bust cycles. Critics of the oil and gas industry have seized on this financial discipline as proof that oil companies are holding back production. However, one of the biggest criticisms about the shell boom over the past 15 years is that the oil companies never make consistent money. Indeed, if you look at the financials of many oil companies, they lost money in four of the past 10 years. Okay, that's critical. The oil market goes way up and it goes way down. And there, there are factors for that. We'll talk about some of the factors. But uh, the way that politicians and Biden and Captain Planet paint these oil companies is they're just fat cats making money hand over fist. And there's, there's no risk involved because there's a ton of risk. They have to send exploration teams out into the Arctic and, and find wells. And then they have to do all this huge investing and hope that there's oil there. Um, and so what they're saying there is we're going to be more conservative in our investments. Um, and I had a graph from a CBS article. Let's see if I can find it real quick. Uh, there it is. So 59% of these companies, their CEO said that they're not um, going to do huge investments into new drilling because they're just trying to be more conservative in their approach because it's a boom and bust market. They, they lose money. Uh, some years. In 2020, a bunch of these companies went bankrupt and, and they all lost money in 2020, right? Be, uh, why? Well, oil futures went to net negative, which was yep. fascinating. I could yep. not believe when that actually happened. So Bizarre, right? for, for those who don't understand, basically what that meant is um, the they were paying people to take the oil because they had so much excess, which <laughs> is insane, right? Like right. that, that never happens, but it actually did it happen happened. at the beginning of the pandemic. Oil and, futures went to negative territory. And, and to just simplify that, when, when the government, uh, all the governments basically say, everybody has to stay home and you can't work, there's no demand for oil, right? right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and plus, they made all of the oil rig workers go home. So nobody's now producing and then... You know, they can't go back to their jobs because a lot of them went bankrupt. So the government got really involved in this and completely tanked the oil market for better or worse. Okay. The government yeah. did get involved in this. Okay. And but, but it was really the market that did this. Like, let's not no. put all the blame because that would be Trump, right? Uh, blaming Trump. I'll That's Trump fine. But I think credit, this was really the market in the pandemic that did this, right? Like, no, this black every, swan event. That yeah. It was just a weird, like, you know, one in a hundred year event, you know? No, because the pandemic didn't make people stay home. It was the lockdowns that made people stay home. I didn't, I, I didn't stay home. It didn't affect me. I was an essential worker. Right. So you can say, well, it was, the, it was COVID. It wasn't COVID. It was, it was governments. Governments made people stay home. Government crashed the market. Whether you like that or not, that is the reality of the situation. Okay. Um, so whatever. <laughs> so it, it's quite interesting that these oil companies, the, the majority of oil companies, even though oil's at crazy high right now, they're not willing to take the risk of investing a whole ton of money into new production because 
you know, they don't have a crystal ball. They can't predict what's going to happen in the future. And then I'll get into my, to my third point on what do you think, Ryan? You agree on, on what's going on? What's the question again? That they're not making huge investments into additional drilling right now. Just Are we I mean, boring you? No, sorry. I, in the market. Long day. Jeez. Um, uh, I mean, if that's just a fact, like I'm not going to disagree with the fact. It sounds very much like a factual statement that they're not putting massive investments into the market. And I would actually kind of proffer, uh, uh, not that I think Josh's explanation is wrong. I think I would offer like an additional explanation as well. It's a very is, complicated situation. I think it, it is. I think they're also recognizing that, you know, part of the world is transitioning away from gas, right? Like more people are buying electric cars. So if, you know, they're reading the tea leaves, they should realize, yes, there's going to continue to be a demand for oil for the next 50 years or so, but hopefully that demand is going to decline. Um, okay, let's, let's talk about that. Cause you're not wrong. Okay. Right, there are gonna... shifting, they're shifting markets, but you look at what Elon Musk said a couple months ago, and he's the head of the biggest electric car company. He said, we need to be drilling for more oil, right? There's still a huge need for oil. So uh, in that same chart I just referenced in that CBS article, mm -hmm. um, it said 59% of why they're not making this is investor pressure to main maintain capital discipline. But they're, there's 11% uh, is governance issues, okay? Um, we, we talked about right at the beginning, Biden has his fingers all over this and you know it and you can try to deny it, but, and, and Trump, Trump too, okay? When the government gets involved in an industry, it screws up the industry. So a no. lot of, who, who's going to want, no, 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 let me finish the thought here. I will, but I'm going to challenge you on this. I don't care because you're going to be wrong. <laughs> Are you going to want to invest in a, in an oil company when Biden just comes into office and unilaterally shuts down a pipeline because he has a uh, democratic, uh, what are they called? People that give him money. Oh, yeah. donors. That, uh, that are, don't want the pipeline because they own the trucking. Okay. When, when the government wields that big of an ax and just jumps into an area and Biden, Biden said, okay. I said this at the beginning. He said he wants to destroy the oil industry. And you have politicians like AOC who want to destroy the oil industry because, I mean, they have Ryan's utopia in mind and they just have no concept of the real world and what makes it run and the energy needs that the real world is on. So you have this government complex that gets involved in the industry and can just kill stuff at a whim. Or, you know, say uh, Biden grants a permit right now well in two years a new president can come in and just revoke it that's what's that's what's happening right now it, it's more so, complicated than that but that is a market factor so why would why would i want to invest in this industry when the government could just come in and and screw with it i have okay. no faith can in I, that can i can yeah. i respond absolutely all right oh, we got, i want to get to ryan's next question yeah okay. so so just quickly you're you're approaching this from a strictly libertarian perspective. How and else all am I want, gonna do it? I know, but so the Joshitarian popped out. But I just want to point out the other side that the oil industry is famous for absolutely ignoring the tragedy of the commons, right? Um, and this is why we want government regulation. Oil industry is a polluting industry, and I'm gonna to get to this with my with my third point, right? Okay. It's a very polluting industry, and they pollute the commons. Okay, so we all suffer as a consequence of the pollution, and they don't pay for that. So they really don't, and that's why we do want some government regulation. I don't think you want them drilling for oil in your front yard. You know, you would be fine if they came and paid for it and bought up the whole area, right? But we want them to drill in certain places. We want because if there's a spill, where do we want that to happen, right? Like we don't want that to happen, but it's yeah. going to happen. So okay. there is a tragedy we have, of the commons. We, we need five, government regulation. We yeah. have five oil refineries in our like in my actual my like legislative district. So it's part of North Salt, the northern Salt Lake County, and in the southern part of Davis County. And and they're just like plumes of smoke all day long. I'm like, yeah. this can't be good for me. <laughs> and I'm sucking this up all day. Well, let's discuss this because it's interesting. Uh, look look how political it is. What's more, what's, what has a bigger impact on the environment with like the Keystone Pipeline? The pipeline, which every animal on the planet could get under or over. And if, if it, the, the line More breaks, they could just than that. turn it off. 
or millions of trucks that are going to be going back and forth. And if they fall over, there's going to be a thousand of oil spilled on the ground and they're polluting the, the air. So which one is better for the environment? The pipeline or millions of trucks going back and forth? The, I would very quickly complicate this, right? So you can try to complicate it, but it's been debunked. The pipeline's way better for the environment. No, and I, and I get the general idea. If we're trucking stuff, that's a problem. If we could find a way to ship it, or if we could find an, a you know a closer way. So I'm not disagreeing with the general sentiment, but the pipeline would have to be done the right way to allow animals to migrate. And if I'll, there is a break in that pipeline, I'll, it's going to spill a lot more oil than one truck that pops over. Because it comes out no, way fast, not. right? Oh, absolutely. Unless um, it's fully automated and they've got brakes all over the place yeah, and they can detect the, the it new instantly. And, and that's eh. what the Keystone Pipeline had. It's state of the art and all of the environmental impact studies had been done and it was shown to be great for the environment, way wow. better than trucking. So wow. what I'm getting at is it's very political. I, I yeah, but you completely I skirted my first point. No, no, no. I, I, don't dis I don't disagree with anything that you said. Okay, because, thank because, you. Because I get... Um, that there are environmental impacts from from uh, drilling oil, oil extraction. And, yes. and moving the oil and all that stuff. Absolutely. But that that article you linked uh, earlier about mm -hmm. that uh, village up in Alaska. Yes. Um, they the the counterpoint to what you're saying is why wouldn't we want the oil drilled here because we have way better regulations on making everything clean than they do in Russia Nigeria. or Venezuela or Nigeria, right? So that that's all going into the same air. We only have one planet. So those guys are all polluting the planet too. Why wouldn't we want it done here where we're actually where we actually care about that? That's that's the counterpoint to that. All right. All right. Let's see. Okay, I'm moving on. Josh. <clears throat> Can we agree that it is basically sixes as to which would come online sooner? New oil fields or new solar, wind, or even nuclear options, though nuclear would probably take longer. All right. So I did, I mean, you just referenced this. I sent an article that kind of led to this topic, right, which was the developing of new oil fields in Alaska. From when a project like this, you know, when you get a permit, when, it, when it's given a green light to when the oil is extracted and refined can take years, even decades, of course, from when a solar installation is given the green light uh, to when it is connected to the grid and producing electricity can also take years, though likely fewer years than oil, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a little shorter, but they're both taking years. The point here is that developing oil fields is not going to lead to more oil on the market tomorrow. Correct. It will lead to more oil on the market in a decade. So we should not think short term for what is effectively a long term issue. Right. Okay. Anything we're doing today is not going to relieve our immediate problems. Exactly. So this is my point. So can we just basically agree that it's it's kind of sixes as to which would come online sooner? New oil fields or new solar, wind, or even nuclear. And of course, nuclear would take the longest because regulatory stuff for that takes 20 years to begin with. So that's all I'm asking is like, can we just agree that it's all of this is long term? None of this is going to solve the immediate issue. That Forbes article said, first, many don't understand the significant lag between drilling and oil production. The drilling count may have risen by 60% over the past year, but U.S. oil production is only up by about 8%. Bingo. So, yes, that's my I, point. I, I, of course. Um, and that's like that's part of what Biden doesn't get. I'll, I'll, I'll get into that. But, yeah, that, that's actually my third, my third uh, question. We'll go right yeah, into it. it so, yeah, funny. I agree. All right. Yeah, it is. It's, yeah. Okay. Ryan, would you agree that oil companies cannot just flip a magical switch and produce more oil? It's essentially, yeah, what we were just talking about. Okay. No, did, I strongly disagree with this point. I, how could you, you possibly come up with this? <laughs> well, did you see that video of uh, the French President Macron, like very gently taking doddering old Joe and saying, Joe, you're, you're telling all these countries to just produce more oil. That's not how it works. I was just talking to, I, uh, I don't remember who it was. United Arab Emirates or somebody in Saudi Arabia, probably. Yeah, sure. They're yeah. they're at like ninety five percent capacity. Joe, have you did you see the video? I haven't seen that video, but I wouldn't it's, be surprised. But oh man, I mean, it's humiliating. I would, be, I would be astonished if Joe Biden doesn't really realize that. Like he's got to be Go surrounded watch the video. with video. A Go million video. advisors who are all saying, uh, "Yeah, we can't just magically create more oil. Like it's not." That's just what he keeps magically. saying. He keeps saying you have to drop the prices and you have to produce more oil. You can't just well, flip a switch and produce okay. more oil. So he can obviously say, y'all should drop the prices. He's an idiot if he thinks they're going to do that. 
Okay. Because it still is a market. It's a market. And Mm -hmm. as Tom stated right at the beginning, when demand is high, you raise prices. This is how you kind of manage the market. Mm -hmm. And certainly they can take advantage of this and they can hammer consumers right now because, and it's really not that demand is high. It's that supply is low, right? Right. So there's limited supply and that's another opportunity for the market to go, oh, we can raise prices because people still want it. Demand is the same. But there isn't. So I get and that. So, I mean, this is so just sheer basic economics. And he doesn't seem to understand that. because No, he's doing it for political reasons. I'm surprised you're not going here because you like to point this out. Uh, no, I, I honestly he's trying, don't He's think... getting hammered because oil prices are high, because gas yes. prices are high. So he's out there trying to say, please, please, please help my polling numbers and lower gas prices. He can't be but, so stupid that he's, he's like, telling they're actually going to do it. What he's telling everybody to do, just produce more and lower prices. He, he, yeah. I think he thinks that's actually Ow. like feasible. Come on, okay? this is just politicking. You've got to admit this. I don't he's think got so. to know. I think this. he's really that dumb. Go watch the uh, Macron video. He like Macron is like Joe. <laughs> Come on, buddy. They 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 can't just flip a switch. Go watch the video. It's shocking. I can link it. I I've thought about showing it. That was one of the nine videos I thought about showing. But let me let me uh, <laughs> diverge slightly because this here's part of the problem. For years we've been saying here. In America, we need to be energy independent. And what we're seeing right now, uh, Joe is is blaming everybody else but himself for gas prices, and he's blaming Russia. And yes, the the, the war over there has something to do with it. Not everything to do with it. Um, but Russia, everybody thought, well, we'll just we just won't buy Russian oil, and 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 that'll bankrupt them, and we'll be fine. No, they're now they're just selling their oil to India and China, yeah. and they're doing great. Because they're making we, a billion dollars a day. Yeah, it's insane. Because mm-hmm. we weren't energy independent. If we had been producing enough oil to provide for us and you know Europe or whatever, uh, and selling it, you know, well, I guess we're selling some to China illegally. It seems to me, but um, if we had if we were energy independent, we wouldn't be so reliant on these bad guys with the energy. Okay, that that's part of the problem, and I've I've discussed this before when. Well, I won't get into that. Um, but so if, I, if I, actually, were, right, right, right. I just have, I have a genuine question. I do. I have a genuine question. Do we have enough resources uh, of our own here, you know, in on, on U.S. territory to be energy independent? I, yeah, because I think we're already the biggest producer, producer of oil in the world. I, I believe. I think I read well, that today. Um, I think, I think Saudi Arabia is. I think yeah, we're one of the I think top, Saudi Arabia right? wins, and not. then Russia is like. Number I thought two. we were third. No, look, look that yeah. up because I know we're right up there. But I thought I read today that we were like at the top, or, or maybe it was we had the potential to be at the top. One of the two. Um, um, let me see. So I think I think we do. I'm not. I'm not positive about that. Oh. Huh? Top three producing countries are the U.S. Saudi Arabia and Russia. Oh, dang, it sucks to be right all the time. <laughs> I know, Josh. Uh, that would that would be <laughs> awful if it was actually true for you. But oh, uh, right. I'm oh, moving the, on to this next. The dagger's question coming here. out. <laughs> well, but but, uh, you under, but you understand that argument there. R- Russia wouldn't be in this this place of power that it's in, and Iran wouldn't have so much power if if the whole world wasn't so dependent on their dirty oil, right? Well, that, sure. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, yeah. I do think it's pretty odd that some of the biggest oil producers, Venezuela, Iran, Russia, are all like enemies to the U.S. state. I wonder if that's like, if there's a reason for that. I don't know. That's weird. Uh, oh. Certainly Ven- Venezuela and Iran, that's pretty obvious, right? Like we intentionally tried to topple their governments because they didn't play nice with our oil companies. So Right, and I'm just wondering like, <laughs> is they that, have a reason to hate is us. Is there a cause and effect though, right? Is it like, did we put too much pressure then it like triggered something? I don't know. That's I just think it's, uh, no, I mean, it's very interesting. In, in both of those countries, they nationalized the oil wealth. So they basically said, we don't want this going to foreign companies, right? We don't want massive profits going to foreign companies. We want to keep that money for our people. And so they nationalized it. Well, that's a big strike against our companies. And of course, you know, our government is going to do the bidding of our our companies at times. And that's what they did. So, I mean, that's literally what led to the Iranian revolution. It's more complicated in Venezuela, but that's the same thing that happened in Venezuela. They nationalized the oil wealth. Right, I, um, I'm. I, I think there's probably more to it. I'm that's, sure, it's but complicated, like, wonder, but that's yeah. a big part of it. There's a I don't rabbit know hole to make a rabbit hole. I really want to go down right now, uh, 
you know, the situation now is we we didn't want to buy oil from Russia, and then oil's gone crazy right now. So what's Biden doing? He's going We're buying it from hand, Venezuela. We're trying down to, to Venezuela, Venezuela. Yep. who is an ally of Russia, and they're in cahoots. So I yes, heard an article it, of that. Is that really happening? They're they're negotiating. Yeah. They are negotiating, and and it's not so much like it, it's it's complicated. But we're basically saying, hey we'll reduce some of our embargoes against Venezuela hmm. if we can negotiate some way to figure out how to make this oil thing happen. It, it's, po- it's politics, right? Like, yeah. come on, can we just admit that this is politics? It's politics. Yeah. Uh, very bad, very dirty politics. Okay. Just, as just as like, if it would be different with any other administration. Oh, come on. Last, Bi- last Biden's question. son just sold a hundred oh, million please. dollars of oil to China. You can say, oh, please, all you want. It's well documented. <laughs> Uh, of, sure. of the strategic reserve is that on one american news <laughs> uh no that was all over the news actually did you not hear about it do you want me to link it to no. you uh, uh sells oil to china this is Ro- reuters on wednesday reuters revealed that more than five million barrels of oil from the nation's strategic pet- petroleum reserves were sent overseas as part of president joe biden's latest release initiated in march some of that oil went to India, some to the Netherlands, and some was sent to China, where the president's son has engaged in years of potentially criminal business activity embroiling the Biden White House in scandal since the 2020 campaign. On Thursday, the Washington Free Beacon published new details about the Chinese oil shipments from the U.S. emergency reserves that Biden promised were tapped to ease the pain that families are feeling in the United States from high energy prices. The Biden administration sold roughly are one you gonna million read the whole barrels. Thing? I got it. one more sentence. One million barrels from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve to a Chinese state-controlled gas giant that continues to purchase Russian oil, a move the Energy Department said would support American consumers and combat Putin's price hike. Biden's Energy Department in April announced... Okay. So I... I, I, That that company, which is commonly known as Sinopec, was wholly owned by the Chinese government. Sinopec is also tied to Hunter Biden, whose private equity firm bought a $1.7 billion stake in the company seven years ago. That's what I read. Yeah, shocking. Uh, I don't know. That's they, that sounds bad, but like that's it's on sounds, Reuters. That, yeah, I know it's I'll on Reuters, and that's perfectly fine. Do you really think Hunter Biden is 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 there making it. this decision? Hunter Biden's half the time in in uh, like recovery from oh, his yeah. coke addiction, right? Like he's not controlling this company. Come on. Then why did we sell all this all this oil to China from the? strategic reserve it, it definitely is weird i i let me see because hunter biden literally works in the white house like uh all of trump's kids did the trump's right. kids sell oil to our strategic enemies no but they advertise their products as part of their jobs come on last, are we last really going to play this game last this is question. Ridiculous. not this is even right. oh my gosh josh you ready can we agree that the green energy options are greener than fossil fuels, even if they're not perfectly neutral in their impact on the environment. So that, yeah. So you're just basically right. saying solar, wind, nuclear, they're better are, than the other, yeah, are better so I, than coal and oil. yes. So I'm, I'm trying to be as fair as I can today. So I'm going to go ahead and allow that greener energy sources like solar or wind disrupt natural environments. I don't think they interrupt them to the same degree as fossil fuels do, since fossil fuel extraction requires building out infrastructure, which the others do too, but then literally polluting the natural environment to in, in order to extract the resources. Fracking does this, and even uh, well drilling for oil requires like jamming tons of sand and stuff in there. It's, it's a very polluting process. And of course, the risk of spills in transit is not 0%. Pipelines are better than shipping. I get that. I'm, I'm agreeing with Josh on this. Um, Fossil fuel extraction and consumption is polluting of the environment at very nearly every step. Now, admittedly, electric cars and batteries are not without their detriment to the environment as they also require the extraction of natural resources. That's fine. But I think the damage is substantially lower than what results from internal combustion engine cars. So can we agree that green energy uh, options are greener than fossil fuels, even though they're not perfectly neutral? Oh, did we lose Josh? Oh. Your powers combined. I am Captain Planet. <laughs> Is he playing Captain Planet? <laughs> Are you not going to agree with this? I mean, I've, I threw you three softballs today, Josh. Come you on. You just skirted the whole issue. But green energy is better. I agree. Green energy is better. We're not there yet. So how about if we talk about real world issues? So here? we already decided that you can't just throw more oil on the market tomorrow. 
Sure. Right. We, we agree. Like this is, we're, we're, we're dealing with long-term issues to try sure. and solve a short-term problem. Yeah. We have a short term problem. Ryan, this, this first, this third question is almost the same as your first question, which is basically like clean energy is better than fossil fuels. Right. And, and yeah, you, yes, but, but, but what, what's your the point? Same question? Well, my, my point is I'm recognizing that green energy is not not uh, without its own yeah, it's not without its own problems, yeah. right? So I'm trying to just be clear and honest. So I'm not Captain Planet, right? I'm not out there like solar is perfect and <laughs> diamonds will fall from your butthole if you make solar, right? Like I'm not saying that. I'm recognizing that it's complicated. It still has detriments to the environment. It's not perfect. But it's better than the alternative. That's not even is, the issue because everybody recognizes that. It's the problem is that we use oil to produce everything. Okay, everything on my desk here is all—it's all a petroleum-based product. Petroleum, my yeah. my business, I can't go buy a Tesla truck to run my business, right? I mean, I could. But you could buy a Rivian truck because those are available right now. I don't even know what a Rivian is. But it's a competitor. It's a competitor. To Tesla. Yeah. Okay, but well, but but look at the price point. I, I'm not going to go buy a Tesla because they're really cool trucks. But well, uh, what are they? What are they like? One hundred and ten thousand no. or right? What no, are they the, tes- the the Tesla Cybertruck is starting out at I think sixty or seventy. It's somewhere around that range. Oh, that, that's really? actually not as bad as I thought. Yeah. No, and um, Rivian the lower I'll sur- end. Rivian I'll, sur- is I'll be surprised if they go on the market less than eighty. Well, yeah. maybe right, but how much is? You know, I've, I don't know the the and there's an electric Ford coming out too, yeah, right? I don't know how good is. that is, but uh, my next door neighbor just bought a truck uh, a couple of years ago, and it was like a fifty or sixty thousand dollar car or, or truck, and I'm just like, wow, that's my Tesla didn't cost as much as his truck. Yeah, sure. Yeah. The prices are coming down. What what Elon Musk is doing? It's so funny that the left has demonized him because what he's doing is freaking miraculous. Where he just set out to. His, his goal was to just show you could make a cool electric car. And then he actually made it affordable and he made it beautiful and he made it fast. Like hey, it's incredible. I, have a Tesla. And I love a Tesla. I know. And he's bringing prices down and he's proliferating mm. the charging stations. And he's repopulating the earth. He's, he's amazing. <laughs> Single That's why the left is going after him is because uh, of that. He just had an affair with his secretary. <laughs> so complicated. You, you agree. That's not why right, they're going Tash, after him. You agree. Than that green energy. Yeah, green energy is great, greener. but but Brian's just skirting the actual issue. I have Sorry. not skirted the issue at all. I'm trying to, to get to the heart of the issue, which is should we drill for more or more oil? And this is kind of our wrap up point, right? And I'm I'm not necessarily going there because I'm waiting for the moderator to step in. But but the ultimate question is should we uh, should the U.S. government encourage us to drill for more oil? Yeah. And my whole point has been that's a long term solution to a short term problem. Why go there? And I'll, I'll get that in my wrap-up. Well, yeah, so, you, we need to go to your wrap-up because I'm not even sure what your position is. I don't even know. <laughs> like, I think you guys, have, you guys have agreed on every question so far. Yeah. And uh, you're like, and we, we've agreed that, that, that uh, green energy is better than fossil fuels. Like, we've agreed yes. on that. And that, and that this won't solve Three times. We right? agreed this on is... it three times because that was Ryan's question. Three <laughs> times. There's no, Im- <laughs> there's no immediate. It was only sense. your question twice, We've, Josh, we've so. agreed. So, like, I don't even know, like. Ryan, can you bug your eyes out real big for me so I can feel like I'm debating Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez here? <laughs> All right. I'm ready. I'm ready to hear Ryan's uh, closing statement then. Bring it home. Right. Bring it all home. So, so, my closing statement is I, I think this is actually a very complicated issue. Issue. I don't think we are going to wean ourselves, the US particularly, off of oil in the next year, the next five years, probably not even in the next 10 or 15 years. We're still going to have yeah, for needs sure. for oil. Okay. Now, the goal is to eventually get to, like I said with my first points, to get to where we don't need oil at all. But right now, for planes, we, we need oil, right? We do not have electric planes that can do this. So, so we're going to need oil for a while. If we're thinking long-term and strategically, that means that we still need to probably drill some wells to extract oil for 20 years in the future. So I'm not saying we cannot drill. I'm saying I don't think the immediate answer to the high price of gas is to go, ah, drill more right now, because that's not going to solve the problem for 10 years. So my thought is actually, and I brought this up with my wife today, right? Like actually... If one of the consequences of these high gas prices is that more people buy electric cars, awesome. 
I'm, I'm right. totally okay with that. And this is kind of what they've been doing in Norway, which is where I happen to just go on vacation for two weeks. In the big cities, it's close to 50% of the cars are now electric. Um, the government has massive incentives to push people towards electric cars. The uh, gas car owners are not happy with this because they're getting hammered, but they're moving in that direction. And what, why Norway is as wealthy as they are? Do you guys know what, where most of their wealth comes from? Welling, obviously, in the fjords. <laughs> oil. <laughs> they have really? massive oil reserves, yes. Yeah, so, uh, nor and, and uh, most of Europe has actually come out and said, hey, Norway, can you pump a little bit more? We're really desperate for more oil because Russia is screwing us over. So a oil-producing company, uh, a country, is actually trying to get away from oil. That's what they're doing. So yeah. it, it, my, my, my answer to the big question is, no, we should probably drill as much as we were going to drill to maintain whatever oil needs we have 20 years down the road. We're going to need that. But if this pushes us away from drilling for more oil because people move to electric, that's a good thing. So that's a complicated answer, but I think that's a fair answer. Cool. Yeah. All right. So, you, okay. okay. So I just want to, you're just saying, you're saying, it sh I think you're the argument, you're kind of the heart of your argument you're making is that like, this shouldn't be as political as it is yes. because there's really nothing we can do right now that will do exactly. anything for this. And so it's all, we're like, Oh, Biden needs to get more oil and, and, but, and, and, but it, nothing really matters. I, I will say though, that <laughs> the, the strategic oil reserves that could, that's right. That's, that's stuff that's ready to go. Right. And yes. releasing that does have an effect. Um, so that's, I mean, I do think that that is a lever he can pull, right? Sure, and, and, he, and he has. <laughs> uh, what, what I, Josh, one thing I haven't heard about that art because I keep pe people brought that up. I've already heard that like a hundred times about releasing to China, but like what percentage was that of what was? Well, it wasn't a tiny time? percent. Okay. So Not a tiny percent. There was. It's more you, the. You're saying a tiny percent. You don't even know about it. What it's a more freaking! The, I, I read the Democrat same article that you were reading. It's more the principle of the matter, though. That's what you're saying, Josh. Right? Yeah. Um. Yeah. Well, okay. I mean, it's it's just more more proof that Biden's as corrupt as they come. Okay. So Ryan said something very interesting. I'm going to build on this, and we're going to find shocking common ground right here. Okay. Ryan said, um, the the reaction to a lack of oil right now shouldn't be, let's go build a billion wells, right? That's what you said. Who had the exact same reaction as Ryan? All uh, of the oil companies. I already, I already said that. That was their reaction to this. They all said, no, we're going to invest conservatively. Biden's the one saying, no, we need to invest all this money in oil. We need to get it going, even though I've blocked it all. The, all the oil companies said the exact same thing Ryan just said. No, let's approach this more conservatively. We don't know what the future markets are going to bear. We're not going to invest a ton of money into a product that maybe we'll have to to uh, uh, pay you to take yep. like they had to do two years ago, right? Um, and so we're actually in agreement here. We're just coming at it from our obvious two different places. Ryan's coming at it from as Captain Planet. Let's save the environment. Let's go hug a tree. I'm coming at it from, as a libertarian. Which Josh actually wants to do, and he admitted I, he's I in do. the exact same page, but he's yeah. got to mock me for it. Uh, of course. <laughs> Why else would people listen? <laughs> um, okay, so I'm Captain at Planet's brother. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> have you seen the the don Cheadle funnier die skit on captain planet uh -oh. no if you haven't oh, as soon as we're done you need to go watch it it is All freaking right. hilarious don <laughs> Cheadle is captain planet and he takes it to like the next level everybody needs to watch it it's really funny All um right. but what I'm i was saying is down. the uh, mm. um now i got sidetracked or derailed here um Okay, so we actually agree. My my argument would be, let's once again, the government is interfering in places where it shouldn't be interfering, and that's what screws up the market. The, you can argue it if you want, but two years ago, the government made everybody stay home, and that crashed the oil market, and now we're reaping the consequences of it now. When the government gets involved, and I, and I understand Ryan's point, yeah, we need to regulate this industry because we can't just have oil companies ripping up the north slope of Alaska and and desecrating the land there needs to be some regulation but there's plenty of markets uh where the government regulates things and then lets the actual market control what's happening and that doesn't happen in oil 
It doesn't happen in colleges. It doesn't happen in healthcare. The government gets involved and it crashes those markets. So if we just let take the take the politicking out of it, because yes, the government has to be involved to a degree. Take the politicking out of it. Get Joe Biden out of it because he has no idea what the freak he's doing, and let the market regulate what's going on. We're gonna have. Uh, uh, something that's always blown my mind when this is pointed out to me when gas is at normal prices you know a dollar fifty gallon two dollars a gallon when you go to the gas station if you buy a gallon of gas it's cheaper than buying a gallon of water or like a liter of water right you go in and buy a dasani it's way more expensive than the gallon of yep. gas which is incredible to me because they have that's to pump it they have to go find it somewhere they have to pump it out of the ground they have to ship it to the refinery they have to refine it then they have to ship it to the gas station and you're getting it for a buck fifty a gallon. That's amazing. That's what, the market. What that means, at work. Josh, is that you should be investing in bottled water companies because I know. that is highway it's robbery. Crazy, is right? what it is. Crazy. Often they're taking that from municipal water supplies with no treatment and putting it in <laughs> bottles it's and so selling crazy. it to you for insane amounts but of it, money. But the Saudi is more watery than water. So, <laughs> so that that's the market at work, right? If you can buy a a gallon well, of gas it's not actually 50? it's it's a bit more complicated in uh, europe slightly well in europe um gas costs almost double what it does in the u.s yes. I live and in europe. why is that because europeans are dorks obviously because yeah, their well, government their doesn't subsidies. subsidize the cost their subsidies of gas. yes yeah the, that. our government subsidized the cost of our gas and they should heavily okay they uh, shouldn't and then they, gas they would be put, a lot more expensive. They also put ethanol in the gas, which as somebody who runs machines all day long with very sensitive carburetors, guess what that does to my gas? It's It destroys it, and it's all political. Or that was all it political. Carburetor. Yeah. Sure, it, it, that was all political. That's, that's that was a, appeasing to Midwesterners because ethanol comes from corn, and that's why they did that. It was a stupid Frickin decision. Ridiculous. It was always political. We, that's that's we, what uh, I'm saying. Get the freaking politics out of the industry because I have faith in capitalism. We, I went to this, um, uh, so we went on vacation to Puerto Rico, um, the last spring last year, about a year ago. And, uh, we went to this Island. So we went to Puerto Rico, which is an Island. And we went off the shore to a little Island called Vesquez or something like that, very small. And we were like on there for like a couple of days and we had golf carts is what we rented. And we were driving them around and like visiting some places. And anyway, the morning that we were about to leave, I had to get the, we had to like get on the the golf carts returned and then her and get on a ferry back to puerto mm -hmm. rico and i like oh I'll just run down i'll go fill up the, the golf carts and so i can drop them off and i go there and i'm like dude, dude oh here's the there's two gas stations on the island i go to the gas station and i like get there and i'm like what the heck and there's this giant line and they're like oh the gas station doesn't open for like another half hour and i'm like oh my gosh right and i like had to get in line and i like i was just gonna do it early but and then i had two golf carts i was like honey get your golf cart over here we gotta <laughs> we gotta hurry and like we barely made it right i had to wait and i had to wait in line and get them all and then get those filled up and i was just like this is what it's like like we're spoiled right in the u.s right mm -hmm. oh, yeah. subsidies it's prioritized uh it just that was i can't believe how it really shocked me of like Oh, this is what it's like when it's hard to get gasoline, right? In these yeah. countries. Uh, and it was probably expensive. I don't even remember, but. You, you want a fun little bonus? So in Norway, we rented a car, right? But we rented an electric car. And I'm not going to go into all the details, complicated, whatever. But here's a bonus for wanting to rent an electric car. You don't have to return it filled with gas. Oh, you can return it with no charge because yeah. they're just going to plug it into the wall. So there is no extra charge to return your electric car. Uh, with you know the battery at that's, five percent nice, or whatever, which yeah, is convenient. super awesome. Yes, yes, because how many times have you rented a car and you're like, crap, I gotta find a gas station right now. And right? you want to do it right before you get there because yes. you don't want to spend, you don't want you don't want to be <laughs> too low and you don't want to. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I drove exactly. it in with like a thirty percent charge and I was like, here's the fob, it's all yours, no charge. And I was like, yeah, yeah cool. nice little win to end the the rental. All right, you guys ready for Tommy's take? Yep. I got, yeah. All right. I got like five, four points I brought up. So, okay. So I think we're all in agreement on, I think most of this, but it's like, we consume oil. The U S consumes oil. And I think as Josh was saying this, right? Like everything on his table is made of oil, but between petroleum, plastic and gasoline for our cars, we're just, we're using oil left and right. Right. It's just like, that's just the reality of it. Right. And um, what's interesting, uh, I'll jump around here. So 
I, and I do agree that oil companies should be conservative. Uh, I, I do like, I actually think there's someone this talk. So um, Burry, Michael Burry, if you've heard about him, he's from the big short, um, the oh. movie, the big short. He, so he's like, he's basically a big bear in the market and he's predicted this. He was pretty, you know, I don't know. He's been like predicting downfall for a while, but um but he's basically one of the things he's saying is we're in a bow. Uh, he's called it the bow whip effect in that we've gone from like uh, shortages and now we're like, and now, right. He thinks we're in the oversupply where everyone's gearing up and trying to oversupply. And then we're going to get a glut and we're going to switch back down into low demand because the, the, uh, the interest rates are going to kill. We're having, we're seeing demand destruction right now. Right. right. That's why oil's going down right now. Copper's going way down. Everything's like dropping. He thinks we're going to swing down and everyone's right. Right. As everyone's ramping up. Right. And we're going to like keep, we're going to, it's basically like an overcorrecting of the car. We're going to be yeah. like going back and forth. Um, Anyway, so I get that with oil, right? They're like, we don't want to get whipped all over the place. So it's like, that's it's the thing. Uh, but um, so a, a few things. And, and I think market forces are good, right? I think it's good that oil is high. I think Ryan's point was perfect, right? One, the, high, the price is high. That's going to incentivize oil companies to, to increase their supply. But also, but yeah, people are going to buy more electric vehicles, right? And it's like, the higher it is, the, the faster that transition is going to happen. Yep. Um, and so, like, I think it's good. Yeah, it sucks. Except you can't buy electric moment. vehicles right now. You can't get a Tesla right now. They're like, well, you can't get any car. Their cars yeah. are still pricey. So, yeah, they're they're over a year out. Yeah, we're still having supply chain issues. But yeah, um, and then what was I going to say? Yeah, green is good. I totally agree. Uh, that green is good in that. Um, uh, so in, in a couple of sense, because there's a video about uh, Elon Musk talking about like, well, most most green cars are are are, oil, are coal cars, right? Because they're run off coal. And he's like, but here he's like, one of the things you got to understand, he's like, with you get such greater uh, energy transition, right? What is it called? Energy loss. Um, mm, yeah. And when, when you can when you can do so, a car engine is is only so efficient, right? To, to, to try and combust in a car. Whereas you can have these huge plants with coal that can get a super high efficiency. Um, yep. and, and he was throwing out some stats, right? It's like 80% efficient from a coal thing where it's like 30% from a combustion engine. And he's like, so even if they're coal cars, we're still getting a higher efficiency, but yeah, but generally we, I totally agree. We should be making that transition. And I think that's the government that should be incentivizing it Mm-hmm. And, and that's what I mean. I think uh, Obama did a lot of that, and I yep. think that's what um, uh, that's what re- what um, Elon did. Right? Was like it was incentivization. He took huge advantage of those um, mm-hmm. EV car incentives to yeah, but to kind oh, of yeah. compensate yeah. for to because the because price. they weren't yeah for the higher price, right? And yep. I'm like, that's exactly what they were meant to do, right? Mm-hmm. To kind of advance the industry, and I think that's yeah. what we should be. We should embrace oil. And we should be incentivizing uh, uh, clean energy. Um, and the last thing I will say about Good this: point. this is, this is uh, oil. We we actually need to be considering more oil uh, independence um, because there's, so there's some great talks that are going on right now um, about the the end of globalization and how we are going to be able to rely less and less. In, basically there's this whole thing of like Pax Americana where pa- Amer- America has been, it's the idea that uh, it's a theory that America has been the big dog in the world. And we've the had police force, the yeah. police force and which has created globalization and global trade. And that that's actually going away. And like America's kind of like taking a step back and globalization as we've known it is kind of like ending. And we can't just rely on, Oh, we're going to get oil from here. We'll get oil from here, you know, and that's all going to be just easy and free. And that, like, we need to actually be more concerned about oil, like our energy independence, I think Ryan was saying, right? It's like, and I think that needs to be actually a higher priority. We're going to be forced to make it a higher priority because Ryan I think this is... That. Ryan was just being Captain Planet, obviously. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, Captain Planet's brother. <laughs> the, well, and I think that's, I think we're just going to be forced to do it, right? We're just going to have to. And like, mm-hmm. there's some great talks. There's a guy that talks, his name's Pre- Peter Zihan. Have you ever heard of him, Ryan? Peter mm-hmm. Zihan, he's he got interesting stuff. He talks about a lot of global global order and stuff like that. And he's basically saying like, yeah, the end of globalization. He talks a lot about that. But um, 
but he's uh yeah he's basically saying like that we're going to be forced into into doing that and that um we're going to see breakdowns in globalization and well, well no his point was that you the u.s is actually in an awesome position we just have like we's like in so many ways we have the awesome geography and demographics right we have we're actually producing enough people we have we have protections from the oceans we have enough oil reserves right we're actually in a very good position but there's a lot of other countries that are in horrible positions like china is actually in a really bad position for oil uh production and like being energy independent and like they're gonna he's basically saying and they don't have enough kids uh that they're gonna be screwed over the next decade um anyway but like so i mean i just think that's gonna be a focus uh, that we're just going to have to do it. And it's just, it sucks, but like, we're just still so dependent on oil that that like, there's just no choice, right? The high end, high cost is just going to incentivize more oil production, right? And that's just going to be mm-hmm. the thing. Um, hopefully we're smart and we keep doing um, uh, clean energy, clean energy incentives, right? And we can make that transition. But it's interesting. Yeah. So that's, that's sort of my take, which I'm basically agreeing with everything you guys are saying. I don't think well, we we agreed on everything. We came at it from two different viewpoints. Yeah, but even Ryan's love big fest finale. Tonight. Yeah, it was a love fest tonight. Yeah. <laughs> no, I took a lot of shots at him because he's a. Pretty, <laughs> I wasn't sure where this is going to go. I wasn't sure what Ryan was even like. As I was like, is he for it or against it? <laughs> like, well, it's about finding common ground, right? Yeah. And I knew that like. These are all points that we agree on. And that book, you remember, Josh, you've, I mean, you've talked about multiple times, that book that I sent you to kind of like ease things, a big part of that was saying like conservatives in the South, yeah, we may disagree on a number of issues, but it's not like any of them want to go out and burn the Amazon and, you know, dump all of their you know oil from their car in the Mississippi. Like they actually are more keen to be out fishing and hunting yeah. than most left-leaning individuals, right? Left-leaning individuals will go hiking, but we're not going to hunt and fish. Well, they're hunting and fishing and they can't eat that stuff if it's all polluted. So it's like across the board, we all want less yeah. pollution. Okay. We just um, have different visions note, for how to I get I just there. linked that Captain Planet video. We should watch oh. it because it's freaking hilarious. Yeah. You guys it in the chat. chat. I yeah. think I've, I've got it pulled up. I'm going to play it. But I, here's what I think, Ryan. Tell me if you agree with this. I think uh, the left demonizes, uh, you know, fossil fuels Mm -hmm. and, and it gives it this bad name. And I think the right embraces it and is like, this is all we're doing, right? Drill, baby, drill. And then, but, but we're like, no, we, we have to embrace it. You're right. We have to embrace it, but we also need to be prioritizing the other one. And we can't seem, it's like everything in politics. We can't seem to just, find that di- decent common ground well, always, it, it's like, more yeah. because you like that i hate it yes. yeah because, seriously because that's it's that's how we that's how we've been trained to act yes but to ryan's point uh, i would solar's great you know put solar panels on your house i have zero problem I th- I, it's great you can put solar panels panels on your house and get a subsidy from the electric company cuz you're you're putting more into the grid than you're taking out right why wouldn't you do that and it and it's largely clean. I mean, there are there are issues with it. The wind turbines kill a lot of birds, right? There's there's issues, but we're eventually we're going to run out of oil. Why why would we not want to find cleaner things? Uh, yeah. Well, well let's and do it before we run out of oil, right? I mean, that's going to force the transition. Did you guys hear that they they came up with a solution that would solve many of the windmill problems with birds? If you paint one of the three, you know, because they use three blades, if you paint one of them black and the other two white, it reduces bird deaths by like 90%. Really? Yeah, it was like this really weird, like scientific finding that came out. I was like, what? It's that easy? Like, literally, you just have to make paint one of them black. And they're like, yeah, that's it. That solves like 90% of the bird deaths. And I was like, but but wow. liberals are going to paint Republicans and conservatives as, like we don't want to do that because we like the bird deaths. Or something. <laughs> like that's where the well, this. But weird you're right. It is just is. partisan. It's it's absurd, it's and that's why I wanted to make this point today because of that book and because I know like the reality is we're all on the same page in what we really want. How yeah. we get there is a little bit different. Eh, our timeline might be different, but we all want the same thing. Yes. Yes. Agreed. Okay. Play the video. I want to see your reactions. Okay. There we so go. I, I do have a confession. I have a confession. I have never seen Captain Planet. Neither have I. It's the worst. Can you see this thing on my screen? Yeah. yeah. Eh, we have to I'll just something. add it later. Let our powers combine. Earth, fire. Hey, what?
Awesome. Did you say heart? I am Planet. It's one of the elements. Well, Planeteers, what seems to be the problem? They're cutting down the trees. Then I guess we'll have to plant some more. Out of boy, Captain. Let's spruce this place up a bit, huh? Okay. The wood is good. Really like that silvery color? Well, he was silver in the cartoon. Yeah, he was like a bright silver. Idiot. <laughs> Human tricks! Trick! 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 <laughs> planet, stop right now! <laughs> That's Pedro from Napoleon Dynamite. Oh boy. Stop! Holy Gaia, that's enough! Stop! Stop, holy Gaia! <laughs> Holy Gaia, is that a term they use in the show? Yeah, they, they worship Gaia. I can't let you do they... that, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you just listening, Captain Planet is killing everybody and turning them into trees. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> Your punk asses. You're going back up. Don't summon me again unless you're ready for that pain. Peace. <laughs> Dick holes. <laughs> Power, Power is mine, mine bitches. bitches. <laughs> hey, all you planeteers at home. Remember, turn off the faucet between usages and recycle those plastics. Or else, I'll turn you into a... Donald. Three. Captain Planet. <laughs> Donald. Great. <laughs> oh, I might have to edit that part, but... Um, it's probably not as good if you haven't seen it. You guys never watched the cartoons uh, as kids? I don't remember I don't, it. I don't even I watched remember it. A, I watched it a couple of times, but even as a child, I realized how stupid that that straw man argument was that they're painting like people as being anti-environment. And that's right. like what I, you're I saying. Mean, that's what the clean. left does. The, le the, the right hates clean environment. They don't like clean energy. What? No, and I, I think it's we've we've obviously agreed on this. There are people who pollute, right? And it's often sure. big corporations, and so it it all gets linked in this really complex way. But then ultimately well, becomes a partisan okay. issue, right? It, it used to be big corporations here. Now it's foreign countries. Now it's third world countries mm -hmm. that are just dumping trash in, in rivers, and 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 there's no EPA in China or whatever. It's it's not the U.S. Now we have very strict well, regulations. On, some happens, on but pollution. not as much as it used to. Yeah, I mean, not even close. Really yeah. If you look at, uh, I think it was the Paris Accords that that Trump got a lot of guff over. It was going to cost us a lot of uh, manufacturing money. I don't remember all the numbers, but we're like a tiny, like one percent uh, of which. Not of global pollution. So uh, as far as contributing tiny. to climate change, it's pretty high. We contribute over the 20%. US? Yeah, we contribute no. over 20% no, 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 to greenhouse no, no. gases. Yeah, no, I'm that's not sure. true. I'm pretty sure. Well, uh, but, I guess but as a bonus, uh, guess who implemented the, the uh, EPA? You guys the know? EPA? The Environmental Protection Agency. Oh, who created it? Oh, yep. I don't know. Richard I'm guessing Nixon. it's a... Yeah, I was going to say, I guess I'm going to guess it's a conservative president. It was. It was oh, Richard conservative. Nixon. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, we'll check. Crook. It's no credit for that. <laughs> you do one bad thing and one everything bad else you did. Did. All you're known he did for. a few bad things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so we're second in the world um, behind China. Let's see. Uh, that totally makes sense to me. Over eleven percent. Sorry, I swear I saw. Uh, okay, the other that, day. yeah, it wasn't twenty percent. That was way too high. Um, anyway, we'll anyway, we'll decide. Uh, yeah. we'll we're that second in. behind China. I knew I knew we were high, but I didn't remember exactly what it was. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? No. That's that was, that was interesting, informative, and we. Uh, yeah, it was like I said, like Ryan said, it's a, we were love fest tonight. So. <laughs> We were actually pretty. We at went each at other. each other a lot. We just but... we just agreed. Right? Yeah. Yes, we did. You you guys just. It's the we, usual we came. Quibbling. 
That was the weird part. We came to the exact same agreement, but from two completely different directions. Mine was from a libertarian direction. His was from a tree hugger direction, but it was actually the same. Well, a a reasonable tree hugger perspective. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. right. Good episode. Peace out. Okay. I think we're good. All right. Thanks, everybody. Josh, we may not always agree when it comes to politics, even though we're trying, but there is one thing we agree on. There is only one way to clean up after going to the bathroom, and that's with a Lux bidet. I've been a proud owner of a Lux bidet for years. I have literally owned a Lux Neo 320 since 2013. That's the warm water model. Talk about happy, fun, poopy time. When I leave the bathroom, I know I'm clean and ready to talk politics in a civilized manner. Exactly. Using a toilet without a bidet is about as uncivilized as it gets. Civil conversations demand civil hygiene practices. And that is why our listeners should get themselves a Lux bidet. And just to be clear, Lux is not supporting one side or the other in this podcast. They support civil conversations and clean butts. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Finding Common Battlegrounds. The music is by Ben Sound. The views expressed in this podcast are those of the participants and not those of their employers. For more information or more episodes, you can find us at findingcommonbattlegrounds.com.